Then it came, I think it's some paradoxical that in this uh, risk stratification we also will use myocardial ischemia to find the vulnerable patient down here. Because when this organization started many years ago, it was started because of some kind of opposition to the cardiologists that were so focused on the stenotic lesions. And we knew that most myocardial infarction did not originate from stenotic lesions. And now we will use a test for a coronary stenosis to find a patient at risk of a heart attack. To me, in the beginning, it makes no sense to me. But I know there is some data that tell you that you can risk stratify, but in fact it's, it's in contrast to this movement, the way it started, where we would like to say, we are not going for the stenotic lesion. What we are going for is a vulnerable lesion. And we would like to risk stratify it according to vulnerable lesion and not stenotic lesion. So I would prefer to have the vulnerable lesion out there. Well, here it is. Can we go back to your slide? <laughs> we have to wait. How, how long? How long back? This? this? We have a pioneer in this room. That's Jim Muller. We started this whole morning with that. <laughs> and I want to ask Jim directly for this. When we started this, we were so obsessed about one vulnerable plaque that's killing everybody. And this is a big fat uh, take part, uh, thin part right from And we were so obsessed. I thought it was hot. We thought it was uh, near infrared spectroscopy. Actually, Cassell's one is. Dr. Cassell thought it was hard. I was following it. But we came to realize that there is more than one more in the Not 200, but more than one more in the flight. And also, this one on the for most cases, they rupture silently, they go through a process of healing, calcification, and then rupture. And repeated rupture is a phenomenon that is silent to us completely, so we don't understand. So, bottom line, we came to realize that upstream, downstream, or neighbor vessels, we have other plaques that went through this natural history further. They have the sonority or uh, uh, obstructive lesion. And I drew this question to all of you last year, if you remember before ACC, that do we have a statistic or an indication to say what percentage of these plaques are associated with the stenotic plaque upstream or downstream, or vice versa? What percentage of these plaques have a vulnerable plaque? We, we got some answers, but obviously there is no data to answer this. So I want to take this question directly to Jim Waller who brought this up and tell us what do you think, Jim? Well, I assume we're here so they don't look at the back of my head. Uh, Mark, I, uh, do I have that? is that a number of people have moved from vulnerable plaque to vulnerable patient, which being a um, uh, in that large asymptomatic group, I'm glad people are doing that, and I hope they could find out if I'm a vulnerable patient or not. But I think there still is some utility in a group of people working on vulnerable plaque while others work on vulnerable patient. It's really a two-front approach that's better. Because when you said of all those heart attacks, 600,000 of them occur in people with no prior disease, well, the other 600,000 occur in people with prior disease. Or right, so, or in, who are in a cath lab. So I think there's room for a crowd of people to work on that half of it, where in the people that are in the cath lab. As you know, and I probably should disclose, um, I'm, I'm no, I just took a leave of absence from academic medicine, so I'm now industry building a catheter to find vulnerable plaque in the coronary. Now, having said that, I think that if people who want to work on that part of the problem in the cath lab based have some luck and can find those lipid rich plaques uh, invasively, then that might help the non-invasive detection methods move along faster, which could then be applied to the general population. Also so, to learn. Also to learn. Yeah, I also think that a, uh, you ask how would you find that 10% vulnerable patient? Well, if you could find a vulnerable plaque, that's a vulnerable patient. And it could, when you talked earlier about relative risk uh, and cancer diagnosis, uh, if you find a melanoma diagnosis, you've got a relative risk of 1,000 of having, if you find melanoma on a biopsy, 
you've got a relative risk of a thousand versus a person who doesn't.